Welcome back to my crochet and knit gift project idea series that I'll be doing all throughout November, hopefully in time for you to knit and crochet along, perfect for gifting to friends and family this Christmas. Each week I'm going to give you both a crochet and a knit version of a specific category. It's all going to be clothing because that is mainly what I do, staying true to my crafty nature. And this week we're doing hats or more general headwear. Now there are so many tutorials and patterns, both for crochet and knit hats but I do occasionally get asked how I make my beanie hats and to be honest with you I always freehand them so I just wanted to show you how you can easily do the same and that making hats really isn't that scary or difficult at all I mean they can be but they definitely don't have to be so I'm just going to stop going on about it and let's get straight in with the crochet hats to me this is the simplest way for you to make a crochet beanie I always say I'm very specific with the types of hats I like to wear and when it comes to beanies I I like them to be quite chunky and to sit fairly tight on the top of my head so I don't like when there's excess fabric at the top of the beanie if that makes sense so this one will sit fairly flat on the top of your head but then we'll have quite a nice chunky like rim around the sizing of this is based on very simple measurements that you can really achieve with any type of yarn and any kind of hook that you have available to you it might just take a bit of a trial and error for you to get the exact stitches in your first chain right I know that isn't so super helpful but if you're ever unsure how many stitches you should start your project with I would always recommend creating a swatch to start with so just crochet a chain of 20 crochet 20 rows and then you can measure that swatch when I first started crocheting making swatches and gorges always seemed so tedious and time consuming to me but honestly I swear to god it will save your life and it will essentially mean that you can make anything to your body measurements or in this case to the measurements that I'll be providing you with so once you have your swatch and you've measured it you can then divide your swatch measurement by the measurements that I will give you during the tutorial but I will run you through that when we get to it I just want to take a little break to thank today's sponsor Skillshare Skillshare is the largest online learning community with thousands of creative classes where you can get inspired learn new things and really put them to work in useful ways whilst also joining a super supportive community of other creatives there really is something for everyone with a wide range of topics from for photography to social media, graphic design and productivity, or you can even focus on your career with freelance and entrepreneurship classes. This year, I actually took the plunge to start my own business, but I found it really hard to find the resources and advice on how to succeed doing this. And for some time now, I felt like I wanna be a bit more intentional and mindful about my career practices. And I found Mimi Chow's on mindful growth and a fulfilling creative life really helpful. The class provided a workbook which I was able to fill out whilst following the classes and I found it really helpful to think more intentionally about my ambitions and goals as well as any fears and insecurities that might be holding me back from really succeeding. It actually also reassured me that I was on the right path and a lot of the questions that she was asking as part of the classes were things that I had already thought about a lot but I didn't really know how to put into practice so now I feel like I really have the tools to not just think about things but actually make them happen. There are also a lot of classes that I'm interested in on productivity and creative idea development which are things that I also really want to be more intentional about. If you also want to unlock your creativity and learn something new the first 500 people to click the link in my description will get a one month free trial on Skillshare. Thank you so much again to Skillshare and let's get back to the video. The yarn that I will be using is the Fluffy Day yarn by Hobby. It's a brushed acrylic and I really love using this for any type of scarves or headwear. I just feel like I keep you really warm whilst being fairly like budget friendly as well then I just use a five millimeter hook to create quite sort of a chunky effect I am holding all of my yarn with two strands just to really really make it extra chunky then you want to start by crocheting a chain and if you want your hat to fold over twice then you're gonna want to chain until you've reached 12.5 inches if you only want your hat to fold over once then you're gonna chain until you've reached 8.5 inches. 
Once you've reached the end of your chain, then it's time to half double crochet into the back loops only of your chain. Basically, it's like the wobbly bit on the other side of your chain. Um, it might be a little hard to sort of get into them at first, depending on how tight you make your chain. I tend to have quite a tight tension, so you can see me sort of struggling a little bit to get into the back loops. But in order to half double crochet, you're going to yarn over once, you're gonna pop into the back loop, yarn over once again, and feed that yarn th through the chains that you should have on your needle, which should be three. So I'm kind of showing you this here a couple times. This sort of first row is always gonna be the most annoying one to do. Once you reach the end and you have your final stitch left, we essentially wanna try and get a really even edge. And you do this by crocheting just into the complete stitch at the very end. So don't just crochet into the back loop for your last stitch, but just into the whole stitch as you would usually. Then once you've done that, complete your half double crochet and chain one. You can then turn your work and you're going to half double crochet into the very first back loop in this row and then just continue half double crocheting into the back loops only of your stitches. Once we get to the end of this, I'll show you again what to do with your last stitch. So here we now have my very final stitch of that row and I'm not just gonna select the back loop here that I've pointed out, but I'm going into the complete stitch. And you can really see here how neat and even that finishing is. And you're essentially just continuing this all the way through until you've reached the end. You can of course do this in one color, but I had a few different colors left over. So I'm just adding them up into the project here. And I thought I would just show you how I weave in my ends and how I change colors. So it's quite neat and also very safe and secure so none of your ends come undone. I'm just casting on my second colour and I like to sort of fold over the two ends just to secure them a little bit and then I continue with my second colour and as I'm continuing I'm also crocheting over the tail end of my previous colour. I'm not using the tail end of my second colour, I'm weaving that in later on just because I don't want it to peek out in between the orange, I want it to blend in with, with the purple later on. So I'm just crocheting over the tail end and because I have this like loop at the end I'm actually looping this onto my crochet hook just to really secure it This obviously isn't necessary and it's probably very unlikely that you have that same situation But this kind of just shows that weaving in your ends is very much like a free for all experimentation and anything that secures your ends go for it So here I am then folding over my tail end again and I'm again for this row not crocheting over my purple because again Again, this would show up against the orange so I'm just double crocheting as I would and then for that next row this is now where I'm gonna hold my purple tail end under my crocheting and this is now where as you can see it wouldn't stand out at all that there's like a woven in tail end in the midst of it all because the colors all blend in together so whether you've been changing your color or not you're gonna want to reach a total of 20.5 inches and this is going to cover the entire circumference of your head so work your way up all the way to 20.5 inches and then it is time to seam together the side so just secure the ends of both your sides and then the way this is done is by slip stitching into the back loop of your front row and into the first loop of your second row so you're basically wanting to connect the two stitches that are next to each other i hope that somehow makes sense and you can somewhat see it on there but essentially if you hold your two sides together you will see the two back loops that are aligned next to each other and those ones you're going to want to slip stitch into continue seaming the side of your hat until you've reached the last four inches and this is where you're going to flip your work inside out and continue seaming this just means that when your hat is complete you won't have any weird seaming poking out and the seams that stick out are going to be on the inside of the hat so just continue your pattern as previously shown. So once you've seamed the entirety of your hat, you can pull through that final loop, but before cutting your yarn, just allow for quite a long yarn tail because we're gonna use that to seam together the top of the hat. As you can see, I made a double folded hat. So here I am just having a good look at it before I seam the top together to make sure that everything looks fine. And you can also see how nice those seams are where the folded over edges, but also where the main 
body of the hat is nothing weird is sort of poking out. You then just want to take your sewing needle, your darning needle and feed through that long tail end and this is where we're going to connect the top of your hat. So I like to really just go all the way around the edge and I like to sort of do this in chunks. It just saves a bit of time of having to constantly feed that long tail end through. So here I am kind of going like three sections each and just pulling that through. Don't worry about pulling anything tight at this point. We can do that later on. Just make sure that you're really getting all those edges just to avoid any sort of holes or inconsistencies later on. So once you've reached the end, you can pull on that tail end and really pull everything tight. But please make sure not to pull too tightly. Depending on the yarn that you're using, you might run the risk of breaking your yarn. So just pull tight, but be careful as you're doing it and just make sure not to overstretch your yarn too much. You will then also see once you've done that, eventually there's no more room to pull. It's all been scrunched together as much as it can and you might still have a bit of a hole in the middle. This is super normal, don't panic. This is where we're actually now going to sew together the top side. So there isn't really any technique to this. All that really matters is that there's as much coverage at the top and everything is pulled as tight as possible. So the way I like to do this, I kind of go from side to side. So I go from the red to the orange, from the orange to the purple, purple to orange and so on and so forth. Again, no real method, kind of just go back and forth from side to side until you feel like everything is fairly secure. And that is literally it. You have finished your hat. Look how gorgeous and chunky it is. I really absolutely love this project and it's so quick and easy to finish. So for the knit project for this video, I was initially planning on sharing a knit beanie tutorial with you, but I found it really hard to give you the correct instructions to follow the way that I create my beanie hats, especially with knitted hats. For me, it really is just trial and error. And I felt like I wasn't really able to give you the exact measurements that you could then easily follow along like I did with the crochet hat, especially with there being so many amazing tutorials and patterns out there. I felt like they would be a lot more clever and detailed and specific with their instructions and mine would just be really hard to follow along, which I don't want. Instead, I decided I will show you how to knit a bonnet, which to be honest, feels a lot more exciting and interesting to me, especially considering that I've already given you a super, super simple crochet hat design. And this isn't just a project that looks super cute and quite impressive, but if you're using chunky yarn like I am, this is actually a much quicker project than the crochet beanie hat, which is crazy. As always, I'll be giving you measurements that you can follow along so you can use any yarn, any needles that you want to use. For the bonnet, I'll also show you two ways that you can make them, one with a pointy end and one with a rounded end. I'll be using the same yarn as for the crochet hat, which is the Fluffy Day yarn by Hobby. And then I'm using 7mm knitting needles, as well as a 5mm hook later on to create the cords. And it's always good to have a darning needle on hand just to weave in those loose ends at the end. The measurements for this bonnet are 12 inches for the width and a total of eight inches in length. So before starting your project, it might be worth creating a swatch or a gorge with the yarn and the needle that you're using. You can just knit 20 stitches by 20 rows, measure that, and then you can use these calculations to divide your swatch measurements by the measurements for this bonnet, just so you know exactly how many stitches to cast on and how many rows you might potentially have to knit. Again, I will be holding two strands of yarn to make this extra chunky, and we're gonna start off by creating a long tail cast on and for this you're gonna want to create a slip knot but leave quite a long tail at the end as this will be used to create the cast on. So in order to do this long tail cast on, you're gonna try and hold the yarn how I am here. So you want the loose end held over your thumb and the end that is attached to your ball of yarn over your index finger. And then you can hold your needle with your other hand. You then fold your needle under the lower yarn where your thumb is, as well as over the yarn that is over your index and you pull the index yarn through the gap that your thumb is creating and that's pretty much it and you can pull it tight. So I'm gonna do it a few times just in case you haven't caught it. So you're gonna fold under your thumb over your index and pull through in between your thumb. Under your thumb over the index and pull through your thumb. Once you've cast on all of your stitches you can create the first row and you will do this by knitting one, purling one, knitting one, 
purling one and so on, just to create a very simple one by one ribbing. Once you've reached the end of your first row, then just gonna follow whatever you've done for the previous row. So if the stitch on your left needle is a knit, you're gonna knit. If it's a purl, you're gonna purl, just to continue on that nice ribbing pattern. Continue knitting until you've reached two inches. And this is where we're gonna go to a normal stockinette. I'm actually changing colors here, but you can create sort of a one color piece. It really doesn't matter. This is the way I add colors. I kind of just add on another slip knot and knit the slip knot with the first stitch together. And then you're just going to continue knitting every single stitch all the way along. Once you've reached the end of that row, turn your work over and you're going to purl every single stitch. And you're going to continue this until you've reached 5.5 inches for your body that is not including the ribbing. Now in order to create a pointed hood this is super simple and you're just going to continue knitting for another 2.5 inches. I'm going to show you how to start decreasing to create a rounded edge but if you don't want a rounded edge and you want a pointed hood you're basically just knitting a rectangle and once you've reached those final 2.5 inches you can simply cast off as normal, fold your work in half and seam it together but you can follow along the seaming when we get to it for the rounded edge as well. You're going to want to do your decreases over the next 2.5 inches and you're also going to want to decrease half of the stitches that are currently on your needle. So this will obviously vary depending on your swatch, this will depend on the yarn and the needle you're working with. So if you know that over 2.5 inches you're going to decrease half of your stitches, you can figure this out using these calculations and then depending on whether you need to decrease two stitches every row or whether you need to decrease one stitch every two rows that really depends, but you can use these calculations quite easily to sort of figure that out. So in order to create a rounded edge, we're gonna decrease the middle. So you're gonna to want to split your work in half and just leave one half on the rest of your needles or place it on hold. You then just wanna continue knitting until you've reached the last three stitches on your needle. Once you've reached those last three stitches, knit together the next two stitches and then just knit the last stitch as normal. Turn your work over, purl the first stitch as you would usually, and purl together the next two stitches. And then you can just purl the rest of the row, turn over and continue knitting. So once you've done all your decreases, you've decreased over 2.5 inches, you can then just cast off your remaining stitches. I like to do it this way, where I knit one, I place it back on my needle and I place the current yarn over. You might want to look up some different casting off methods for this, just so you can follow along quite nicely. But you're going to do that all the way down and cut off your yarn and just secure the end there. The decreases for this are going to be slightly different just because you want to decrease in the other direction. So for this obviously here I'm just casting on my new yarn and I'm doing this by knitting together the slip knot and my first stitch together and then in order to decrease this side I'm going to simply slip the next stitch onto my right needle. I'm going to knit the next stitch as normal and then I'm going to place my slipped stitch onto my left needle and feed through there my knitted stitch. And then you can just continue knitting that row as usual, start purling your next row as usual until you get to the last three stitches. The next stitch you're going to purl as usual but place it back onto your left needle and then you're going to use the next stitch to slip it over the stitch you've just purled. You can then purl the last stitch as you would usually. Again continue this until you've reached the 2.5 inches and cast off your work but instead of cutting off your end here you can actually use this to, to seam together the top of your hood so just fold your piece in half hold it together and then you can use your crochet hook to slip into both sides together just create some very simple crochet like slip stitches into the adjacent stitches this might be a bit tricky depending how tight you cast off again my tension tends to be quite tight so you can see me here sort of struggling a little bit but you're just going to continue this all the way down and then once you've reached the edge you're just going to continue slip stitching again. Ideally you want to find the, the matching stitches on both sides just to create like a really neat edge. You can then cast off 
and just make sure that everything is nice and tight. I like to just add together both yarn ends here and tie them together and just make sure nothing will come undone later on. We will then create the ribbing around the hood and we're just gonna do that by looping through every single stitch around the edge. So you're gonna take your yarn and feed that through the first stitch at the bottom of your ribbing. And then you're going to use your needle to sort of stitch into every gap along the side and just loop through your yarn. This is so straightforward. Just make sure that you grab every single stitch. You can see here, I'm actually pulling the edge a little bit just so I can clearly see which stitch I need to go in next. Then once you've reached the end of that, you can flip your work over and start knitting your ribbing. Again, like we did before by knitting one, purling one, knitting one and purling one. You can create the same amount of stitches that you did for the first bit of ribbing you did at the bottom. I actually like to make this piece of ribbing a little bit slimmer so I think I left off like one row but this is completely up to you you can actually at this point hold your bonnet around your face and kind of evaluate how much more ribbing you want to add once you're happy with the ribbing then you can cast off and we're going to do that the same way as we did with the top of our bonnet and you're just going to knit every knit stitch, purl every purl stitch, but in order to cast off, you're just gonna slip over your previous yarn and just continue that pattern this way. Once you've reached the edge of your cast off, don't cut off your yarn yet, because we're actually gonna use this loop to create the cord where you're gonna tie your hood later on. So grab your hook again, and you're just gonna crochet your chain until you've reached 20 inches. And once you've reached that, we're going to slip stitch into the back of every loop. So you're gonna want to find sort of the bump of every chain, and just slip stitch into those bumps until you've gone back to your ribbing and this is where I just like to create a couple slip stitches into the ribbing to just really secure that cord obviously it's going to have some kind of pressure on it when you're tying it so you just want to make sure everything's tight and nothing's going to rip create a slip knot and just do the same on the other side of your hood as well and then you can basically just take your darning needle and secure all those loose ends I always like to sort of feed it through one way and, and go back that same way just to make sure those loose ends are really nice and tight Right, there you go you have just completed your first bonnet it really is that straightforward when you think about it all you're doing is creating a rectangle and sort of knitting some ribbing around it i've just made two super cute simple easy quick headwear projects that are perfect for gifting to friends and family or just keeping for yourself for this winter season this crochet hat genuinely is such a simple design that can honestly be recreated in any way you like i've made a few different versions before where I've used different colors, where I've only made like one fold and immediately you have something so unique without really putting in that much work. Like really all you're doing is crocheting a long rectangle, seaming it together, tying the top together and you were done. Like it couldn't be easier, which is what I absolutely love about this project. Now I can't lie, the bonnets are definitely my favourite project from this, just because they are so fun to make and they look so cute. But again, the design itself isn't super complicated. I actually made a few different designs as I was sort of figuring out the instructions and I actually had to stop myself from making more because they were just so fun to make and the instant gratification you get from it because they are very quick to finish it's just like addictive. So I will 100% be making more of these. These will all be available to buy in my shop as well if you are interested in buying one, but there will definitely be more colors coming. As you saw, obviously I gave you the option for a pointy hood or a rounded hood. I also tried a really, really rounded hood. So. Instead of doing the decreases in the very middle of your project, you kind of do the decreases a bit further out. This is quite a common technique for bonnets or these like hoods and balaclavas as well, but I actually found this to be a little bit too rounded. And the decrease I showed you for this one seemed to be the perfect mix between being really rounded and being pointy because it doesn't sit well like perfectly round your head. It still gives you a bit of, I don't know, like it doesn't make your head super round. I personally have a really round head, so I try and avoid anything that enhances 
enhances that even more you know so i'm so so happy with this layout and yeah i hope you enjoyed it too um do let me know if you end up making any of these which one is your favorite also i'd be really interested to know if you're someone who crochets does this maybe motivate you to pick up knitting and the other way around if you're knitting you've never crocheted before would you consider doing a crochet hat i do both and i love both for different reasons but i know that a lot of people are very set and have their preference on whether they like to knit or to crochet but yeah thank you so much for watching this video and i will see you next week for another gift project video for this series. Bye!